My name is Jocelyn Greeley. I'm 49 years old. I um, was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016. I um, received a mammogram as part of my annual well visit. When they did the mammogram, just like other ones before in the ultrasound, I had had some abnormal ones before and they had said that they may have to do biopsies or further imaging, so I wasn't necessarily concerned um, when they said that I needed to come in for a biopsy. She had felt something during the visit, but it's the same place that we have been feeling something for several years, so I wasn't necessarily very concerned. I'm a physician, so I had sent many women for a, um, a biopsy before, and so I was more enthralled with trying to figure out the, the, the apparatus. Um, I kind of twerky because I have like an engineering undergrad degree, so I think about like the way things work a lot. So I was having a long conversation with the um, interventionist about how the biopsy tool worked. And I remember lying there looking at the tissue that she was extracting and thinking that it looked like the same type of tissue that I extract. I'm a gynecologist that when I do a biopsy of the uterus that looks like cancer, but I really didn't think much of it. I was just like, oh, it kind of looked like this kind of tissue, this glandular tissue. I had told the doctor I was fine with them calling me over the phone. And um, I remember I was at work um, and I think they called me about midday. I remember when he called, he took a deep breath. And so I was like, oh, okay. And so um, then he goes, are you, are you okay with me discussing your results over the phone? And I was like, at this point, yeah, you gotta tell me now, you know, I can't wait and I don't have time to leave work to come see you. So I need to know now. So, um, so he told me that it was positive for cancer. And so um, the thing that I was waiting for was um, when they, tell you you have breast cancer, then they also do additional studies to see if it's sensitive to certain hormones. And so um, triple negative breast cancer is very deadly um, in general for black women. So I was waiting to hear whether I had triple negative. All I was thinking is, is that if he tells me I have triple negative, I'm, I don't know, you know, kind of thing. I was relieved that he said that I had um, estrogen receptor positive and HER2 negative. Those are the three markers. And so he was like, if this is the type of breast cancer you have, this is the best one to have. It's the most treatable. It's the one that they have the most information to do something about. And so um, at this point, I um, still had to finish the rest of my day, you know, at work. I don't know why. Like right now in my post breast cancer self, I probably would have packed my bag and went home. But at that moment, moment in time, I was like, I got to finish seeing these people. I have patients waiting. You know, I got to finish my day. I'll figure this out later. And it probably wasn't until like I was on my way home that I let myself really kind of absorb, you know, kind of what was happening, you know, what were the next steps. And um, at that point, you know, you just go into, okay, as a physician, I'm thinking, okay, who's going to do my surgery? You know, what, what all, how is this going to look? If you're going to switch providers, you need to do it before you start your treatment because it's very difficult to do it after um, because it just becomes a little bit more cumbersome and a lot of doctors don't want to follow what other people have done. Um, so I'm glad that I did make that transition before I had surgery and before I got treatment or before I didn't like the results I was getting because it's harder to do later. They believe the breast cancer to be stage one. I had two options, either a lumpectomy with radiation or um, a mastectomy. And so for me, I was thinking I had known someone, a close family friend who had had stage three breast cancer, who had mastectomy, had to, you know, do several rounds of treatment and had to come back, you know, some years later or time later for reconstruction. And, you know, it was such a multi-step process. And I had also had patients who, I have one patient who um, two or three years later still hadn't finished getting her, you know, reconstruction done. So I just didn't want to have to drag that out. So I was thinking, um, that I would do the lumpectomy um, and then they would do, you know, whatever small reconstruction that they have to do at that time. And then I would do the radiation. So that was my thought process is I would just kind of do it all in one block. And um, I decided to actually take off work um, to do it just because I just wasn't mentally in the space where I was going to be able to care for other people at that point in time. So I just took a block of time. Thank goodness I have a, a job that I had the time and I had paid time off. So that makes a big difference because if I had not had paid time off, I might not have been able to take that time. But I did have that benefit, you know, with my job. So I just decided that, you know, kind of enough is enough. You know, I needed to focus on me because I wanted to make sure that I did heal and I did do well. And it was the first time I would say where I felt like 
I allowed myself to be okay with people helping and people doing things for me. Um, and I truly say that that was a very cathartic kind of feeling and moment that I had not allowed myself to have before. The healing process from the surgery was not so bad. And then I think I did about six weeks of um, Monday through Friday um, radiation treatment. And I think when I started radiation was when it really hit home. Um, and so every day um, when I came for my treatment, you know, I'm the kind of person that everything has to be the same every day. My pink Jack and Jill socks that I'd gotten from a conference, I had to wear my pink socks every day to keep my feet warm. I had to have them change the Pandora, you know, to Kirk Franklin every day. I had to lie in a very specific spot, you know, in the same way on the table, you know, every day. It was just like I had to do this and get through. And radiation is only like 15 or 20 minutes. So it's not a long time. It's just the prep there and the prep home. I mean, you know, after, you know, and actually lying still that whole time because you can't move. So you have to get comfortable because you can't, you really can't move. And then you're scared to death to move because you don't want the radiation to go in the wrong place, you know, so you really like paranoid about it. I would say the worst part about radiation was just the fatigue. I've never felt that type of fatigue ever in my life. It was like you couldn't sleep enough to get refreshed. I would come home, I would just kind of lie in a recliner, you know, that we have and just do nothing. You know, whenever do you do nothing, right? And when you don't have to necessarily take care of everyone else. And so it wasn't a vacation in a sense, but it was kind of a mental, a little bit of a mental vacation from caring for other people and being able to focus um, on myself. Looking back, that the moment of allowing others or succumbing to allowing others to care for you, at first it feels kind of like a, a weaker moment, but in retrospect, it's a, it's a wonderful um, moment and feeling. And then you also are able to see how much love and how much support that you have around you that you may not realize that you had. It was just so nice, you know, all the flowers and cars that you get. And, you know, you don't want to be sick to get attention, but it is nice to know that people do appreciate you and, and your place and the role that you play in their lives. So that was very nice. The advice I would give to women of color would be, um, firstly, when people are giving recommendations, remember that everything is a little different for you as a person of color, women or a man of color. So I always say be on the conservative side. You know, if they, like we were talking before about if someone says you don't have to get a mammogram, you know, every two years, um, but you're able to do so and your insurance covers it, then get that mammogram because you are, you know, through social determinants of health and our history of racism in this country, we end up with the worst outcomes. Find someone or something that you can, number one, talk to, that you can share your innermost um, lowest, lowest moments or your insecure moments about what's happening. So I would say, you know, mental health and that support system is the most important thing, however you find it. And I think there's many ways to find that. Don't try to, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't try to tunnel through it alone because at some point your body's going to stop you and then it's going to be harder to pick it up. I've learned that everything is for a season and as long as you're moving past that season and don't stay in that moment, then, you know, there's so much more that God has for you. And so that's kind of how I try to live my life.